<laughs> On July 4th, 1776, Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence, a document drafted by Thomas Jefferson, stating that the 13 American colonies were free from British rule. The document also detailed the importance of individual rights and freedoms. As president of the Continental Congress, Hancock is credited as the first signer of the Declaration of Independence. His prominent stylish signature became famous. According to legend, Hancock boldly inscribed his name so that the English king would not need glasses to read it. Today, the term Jan John Hancock is synonymous with signature. Please welcome Bob. <coughs> Bob. Masters, after Jack's speech, maybe I should just sit down. No. no. <laughs> I think I should still go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Fifty-six men appointed by the individual colonies were uh, signers of the Declaration of Independence. Their goal was to overthrow the yoke of tyranny that was imposed on them by Britain. So they signed the Declaration of Independence, which stated that America was going to be independent and sovereign. They mutually pledged their honor, their, excuse me, they mutually pledged, pledged their lives, their honor, and, I have this, they mutually pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. <laughs> to each other, knowing that if they were captured, death would be the penalty. At a later time, Daniel Webster, in his oration, Independence Forever, stated, whatever may be our fate, be assured, be assured that this declaration will stand. It may cost treasure, it may cost blood, but it will stand and it will richly compensate for gold. Through the thick gloom of the present, I see the brightness of the future as the sun in heaven. We shall make this glorious and immortal day. When we are in our graves, our children will honor it. They will celebrate it with thanksgiving, with bonfires, with illuminations. On its annual return, they will shed tears, copious, gushing tears, not of subjection and slavery, not of agony and distress, but of exultation and joy. Have you ever wondered what happened to these 56 men? Five were captured and by the British and tortured until they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the war. Another lost two sons that were captured. Nine fought in the war and died from wounds inflicted on them in the war or from other hardships of the war. What kind of men were they? 24 were, plant, were lawyers and jurists, 11 were merchants, 9 were farmers and wealthy plantation owners. All were men of means, all were well educated, they signed anyway. Carter Braxton, a wealthy, wealthy planter and trader, lost all his ships to the British Navy. He sold everything that he had to pay his debts. He died in rags. Thomas McKim <coughs> had, was forced to hide his family and move them several different times. He served in Congress, in the Congressional Congress that Jack mentioned, and his children were kept in hiding. Poverty was his reward. Vandals, or soldiers, or both, looted the properties of Elry, Clymer, Hall, Walton, Winnett, Hayward, Rutledge, and Middleton. 
Francis Lewis had his home and properties destroyed and his wife was jailed. Within a few months, she died. At the Battle of Yorktown, Thomas Nelson Jr., whose home had been taken over by the British General Cornwallis, or quietly urged General Washington, open fire. General Washington did. Thomas Nelson's home was destroyed, and he died bankrupt. John Hart was driven from his dying wife's side. His 13 children fled for their lives. He wound up hiding in the forest and in caves for a year, returning home to find that his wife was dead and his children vanished. He died from exhaustion and broken heart. John Hancock, had served as president of the Congressional Congress and signed the Declaration of Independence. Later, he was the governor of Massachusetts twice, and he presided over the Philadelphia or Massachusetts State Convention when they ratified the Declaration of the U.S. Constitution. His two children did not survive to adulthood. Such were the stories and the sacrifices of the American Revolution. Students today do not learn much from the textbooks about what was leading up to or during the Revolutionary War. We didn't just fight British subjects, a siege of <coughs> aggression, of deprivation of rights had existed for many years. A war had been going on for two years prior to the signing of the Declaration. My conclusion is missing. <laughs> they gave us all a free and independent America. The history of books do not tell us a lot, but we didn't just fight the British subjects. We, but uh, in addition to that, we fought our own government for independence. You know, the government was the British government at that time. 240 years later, I did the math, <laughs> comfortable and prosperous and secure in a free America. We take these precious liberties for granted. We could do well to listen to what Jack had to say and instruct our children and do all this reading that he suggested. I'm glad I heard his speech first because it makes my conclusion better. Thank you very much. <laughs>